This is the X Plus Rival Mini PC, and it might be living up to that name because if all the bullish marketing is to be believed on it, this might be rivaling the framework desktop that I just looked at a couple weeks ago. Because in here is the Ryzen AI Max 395 Plus chip, or also known as Strix Halo, which has become a beast for both gaming and AI large language models. But I wanna see what it's actually like before I make that decision. Whoops. That is an incredibly strong odor that hit my nose. It smells like cleaning material. Maybe maybe that means it's good then. I, who knows? It's very bland marketing on the inside of the box, but in here, I think this is, yep. These are all the cables we'll need. Let's take a look at our power brick here. It is 240 watt power brick. Looks like it includes one HDMI. Not quite sure what spec it is. Neither is the website. We'll find out later. <laughs> What are these, thumb screws? I don't really know what they go to. Instruction manual, instruction manual, in case you didn't read it the first time. And here it is, the star of the show. It's very light. Oh ho ho. It actually looks kind of cool for a mini PC. It looks like a little bit more gamery than a traditional NUC does. What am I hitting on the back here? Is this tab? Oh, this is where the M.2s are, but I was trying to figure out what this little flappy tab is, but I think it's just to help you get it off there. That's a little confusing. I'll put that to the side. And then the last thing in here seems to be a little bit of a snack. Is this, what is this? Wow, that's charcoal. One moment, please. Just cut that. The last thing in the box here is the stand, which Maybe I need to read the manual to figure out how this goes on. Does it just, oh, it kind of sits in there and then, is it really just like, nope. Oh, there's, it says there's more pieces. Oh, there they are. There's a couple more pieces. This is starting to make much more sense now. And then those two thumb screws I found earlier, I'm starting to understand. It seems that they go on like this and then the mini PC would go in the middle. I'm not actually gonna set up the stand because I actually kind of like the look of it like this. Now, other than arguably looking a little bit more gamery than the framework one, why do I think that this is a rival to it? It's because again, it's using the exact same chip in here, but it's actually coming in at a starting price that is on par with that computer, but it also includes some other features such as more IO, specifically on the front here. We've got a full size SD card reader on the front. We've got a USB-C, two USB-A's, a headphone audio jack combination, and then our power button. And the button on the front here cycles between three different performance modes, which again, on their website, seems a bit conflicting because they appear to call it a different mode, depending on where you're looking, the BIOS, the website, or actually on the computer itself. On the backside here, we've got three USB-A's, an HDMI, a display port, a USB-C, a 2.5 gigabit LAN, and another audio port. So you actually get two, which is kind of cool. And then a power port there for you to actually plug it in and get this thing going. The HDMI on the back here and the display port, also a little confusing, like I mentioned. In one spot, they say it's HDMI 2.1. In another, they say it's HDMI 2.0. Let's hope we got the 2.1, because I have no idea how to check that unless we actually plug it in and get a 2.1 display and see if we can run it at the max bandwidth. On the back here though, like I mentioned, this is the M.2 access. I wanna open that up just to see exactly what else we get back there. And maybe we can access our Wi-Fi card, which is Wi-Fi 7, by the way. Oop. There we go, there's our one SSD that's installed already, and it looks like we have access for a second one right there. In this case, we have a, wow, two terabyte included SSD. Another reason why maybe this is rivaling the framework, you have to bring your own or buy one from framework. The price you see includes a two terabyte SSD. Can I access the, nope, I can't really access anything else. Oh, damn, the Wi-Fi card is like, right under here. Can't quite get to it if you want to swap it out and upgrade it in the future. That's okay, I'm sure you can open the rest of this. I just noticed that the thermal pad on the M.2 cover only covers like <laughs> the first half of the SSD. So if you had a, a full size SSD that maybe had like more chips on this side, it wouldn't be getting any of the cooling from this heat sink. Something to take note. Okay, framework, you've got a one-up on this one. This one's not as repairable. It takes six screws removing the rubber feet to get at it. Oh my God, did I not peel this enough? Is there more? Damn it, there's another one. <laughs> Never mind, eight screws. <laughs> now it's time for the grand reveal. Oh, ho, ho. There it is. There's our fan right there. I'm gonna unplug it just so I don't break that cable. Tiny little fan just right over in the back side here. I'm not really sure what that's cooling. Maybe just providing an extra little bit of passive airflow along the back of the board. Dang it, I was kind of hoping this was the side with the chip though. Can't see much else from here, but there's that Wi-Fi chip with the antenna kind of running up along the front here. Is there anything else that's of note? Not really, because this is the back side of the board. I'm going deeper. 
Can't wait for this to not boot when it's time to play games now. Dang it, I really wanted to see it. I wanted to see how it's being cooled because one of the biggest differences between this and the framework is the cooling system. On the framework, you had a full 120 mil fan that had a pretty chonky heat sink. On this one, I, it's a lot thinner, so I wanted to see what it's cooling. No, please, let me add it. Oh, wait, hold on. Nope, that's the power button. Damn it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure what it is, but I wanna, I don't wanna go too much deeper just in case. I wanna still turn this thing on. I technically don't need to actually see what the cooling system is. Labs did do some numbers to see how hot it gets. To the surprise of no one, if it's this thin and a lot you know, less cooling than the framework, it actually didn't perform as well <laughs> in terms of cooling. And I mean, to be fair, I don't think this one is designed to be as opened up like I just did uh, compared to the framework, for example. I guess unless you need to like actually repair something in there, but. Nah, I wanted to take a look. And now I've been disappointed. Other than cooling, one of the major differences between this and the framework desktop is that this one starts with 96 gigs of RAM, whereas on the framework side, if you want to get the 395 chip, it starts at 64. This can be configured all the way up to 128, just like the framework desktop, but it needs to be soldered in order to reach those crazy speeds of 8,533 megahertz. It actually can't do that, but that's what this website advertises. It only goes up to 8,000. I'm not sure where they pulled that number from. We looked in the BIOS with labs and they couldn't figure it out. False advertising? I don't know, maybe it can. I wanna power this thing up though and see how it does in gaming. Not after I game this segue to sponsor. Thanks to eMead for sponsoring this video. Their pixie webcam doesn't just look like a cute character from an animated sci-fi movie. It's got a ton of features too. Capable of 4K imaging at 30 FPS thanks to a dual camera system, industry leading Sony sensors, and blink focus technology. It can achieve super fast autofocus in about 0.2 seconds. It also has smart auto tracking, gesture control, and with its pan, tilt, and zoom features, you'll be in frame even if you tend to move around a lot. Me, I can't, I'm stuck here. Plus with a three microphone array, it really is an all-in-one video conferencing solution and great for content creators too. Check out the eMeet Pixie using our link in the video description and upgrade your webcam game today. Let's power this baby on, but before, look at the RGB. Wow, when you look at it straight on like that, it actually is quite dominating. Okay, here we go, let's turn it on. It is really quiet if it is on. Oh yeah, there you go, it booted. Holy cow, at least on boot, it is extremely quiet. Did I plug the fan back in? <laughs> I think I did, right? <laughs> oh. Ah, uh, once we're in Windows, the fan decides to kick in. You know, that demanding task, Windows. <laughs> it's pretty loud. How many fans does this thing have again? I think there's three, because that's what the marketing says, and because I didn't get the other side off, I couldn't actually confirm that. I think I see at least one fan through the top grill right here, and then there was that back fan. Let's see how loud it is then when we actually start getting into some real games here. Okay, let's open up our task manager here. I wanna see just how many gigs of RAM is being, oh, there you go. Okay, so 32 gigs of RAM is being allocated to our GPU, and then we have 64 gigs of RAM being dedicated to our CPU. Just like the framework, this one can be configured in the BIOS, and with this model, you can go all the way from half a gig of RAM up to 48 gigs of RAM. So it's not quite the three quarters that framework allowed you to go, but I mean, if you put 48 gigs of RAM on this GPU, you have more VRAM than a 5090. So running large language models that could fit entirely in RAM, for example, will theoretically be much better on this device than some of those higher end cards. I mean, obviously big asterisks, big asterisks based on the type of model and exactly how fast it is and everything, but it gives you an idea of exactly how much VRAM you can give this puppy. I want to do some gaming on it with the stock config, which is the 32 gigs. Let's do, I did cyberpunk with the framework. So let's do cyberpunk again. Boo. What, what do you mean boo? I wanted rivals. You want to, oh, you wanted rivals on the rival? Guys, we can't play rivals on the rival. It's not part of our test suite. We are testing it though. We're trying to. You're testing it and I can't play rivals on the rival? Bull Oh, that fan is definitely picking up. Can you hear it? Yeah. I wanna hit the power button, or the light button on this and check the modes. Okay, so we've got like a rainbow wave. Ooh, red. <laughs> oh, yellow. Does it just do all rainbow? What's the next one? Off, okay, very cool. Ooh, look at that. 
Oh, I was talking to John from the labs. Apparently you can't configure this other than just this button right here. It's just a bunch of presets that you hit and you find one that you like. We're gonna go with unicorn barf. All right, let's give it a go. Yeah, I'm cyberpunk. 1440p, basically everything on high and ultra. Average is 46 in this area. Let's get to like a, oh crap. I've never played cyberpunk before. Am I not like a robot? I thought I could live fall damage. Well, we're almost to the point where I can start killing people. And then I'll tell you what the FPS is. <laughs> okay. Ooh, 1% lows. When it was loading there, it was like 20 FPS, 30 FPS now, 40 FPS average roughly. You know, I think if you're like a PS4 gamer, this is right up your alley. It just costs a lot more than a PS4. I think we should probably go down to 1080p though. I feel like that's where this thing will really shine. It's a little bit better. Our average is around 50. Probably get it up to 60 if we did some more tweaking with the actual settings, which in that case, then I would call this totally playable, 60 FPS. Oh my God, we touched it there for a second. Do I keep my FPS average when I start killing people? It's not the type of game I'd play anyways. Let's boot something else up. This thing's not quiet. It's kind of annoying actually. And it doesn't even feel like it's moving that. Oh, there's actually a decent amount coming out the back, which is fine, but I would expect these to be like an intake or something or, or another exhaust. We're actually getting two gigabit download, which according to the marketing, it said that two and a half is twice as fast as one. Matt's a little hard, I guess, cause it's supposed to be one, two and a half times faster, not two times faster, but hey, won't criticize them too much. I wanted to make sure I was in the turbo mode, so I hit the button. I love that it just pulls up this image. So that's probably eco, unless that's eco. And that's turbo? I'm not really sure, it doesn't give me anything else other than that. I'm gonna hope that red is turbo. My download slowed down. Red was stop, actually. <laughs> that Also, that click on that button is the worst feeling click I've, I think I've ever felt on a desktop computer. Okay, my bad, you don't need to yell at me just because I was insulting you. While I wait for CS2 to download, we can go over the lab's results. In 1080p, amongst all of our games, we decided to test it both in the balanced and performance mode against the framework desktop. And in the performance mode, it was on par, but in some games, it was about a 2% worse performance across the board, whether it was like F1 uh, 24 or Alan Wake 2. And then in the balance mode, it definitely suffered a lot more than the framework desktop. We also did try ray tracing because it's capable of ray tracing. I would not recommend it. I mean, I didn't recommend the framework in ray tracing either. As soon as you turn ray tracing on, the frame rates basically get cut in half and you're getting like a 30 FPS in cyberpunk. And then in 1440p, again, same story. It seemed on par with the framework in the performance mode and then the balance mode, which was worse, but that's kind of expected if you're toggling between the two modes. The result that I'm the most interested in is the thermals, mainly because this thing is loud as heck when it's right beside my head and it kind of shows. At least in our F124 test, it struggled compared to the framework desktop. It got up to 84 degrees and averaged 82. And it averaged way hotter than the framework while drawing less power on average, which not a good thing. I didn't mention it earlier, but this chip is actually basically locked at the 120 watts that it advertises. Whereas the framework was able to clock a little bit higher if it felt that it needed it and it could go further. And again, oh man, this thing is getting real loud again. I'm trying to talk and it's interrupting my thinking. And same story in Cinebench. It was averaging way hotter while drawing less wattage. It's probably because it is a way thinner cooler. Saying that though, it is still a performative little machine. When we did some of our blender renders, it actually managed to keep up with the framework in some tests. It was a little bit behind, but again, that's probably due to it maybe overheating and thermal throttling. In our multi-core test, it was again, just slightly behind the framework desktop in the performance mode, but the single core performance was identical, which is what I would hope because they're the exact same chip. In our Photoshop test, this is where this thing really shines through. In the Photoshop, it actually outperformed the framework by just a tiny bit. My CS2 is downloaded. I don't care about Photoshop. I have gaming to do. <laughs> Got everything on high settings, 1080p, 1% lows. It's hard to see with the mini map. What is that, 80? Hey, 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 I'm, I, stop it, stop. I, I, uh. 1% lows seem to be settling in at about 80 with our average being 150. It doesn't seem to be as good as the framework desktop. But again, I wonder if that's because of a heat issue. I don't know, this is CS2, right? I don't, if it's overheating in this game, bruh. Oh, dude, triple, oh, quad feed. I'm reloading, okay. It's very distracting though. I think if I had headphones on, I could get over it. But this thing is, this sucker's loud. 
But just because it's loud, does that mean it's not worth it? Well, it depends on what you get it for, because depending on when you refresh the page or which device you open the website on, the price seems to change. At the time of filming this, we've seen it for $1480, starting at this config, and $1700 for the 128 config, which again, is cheaper at that top end model than the framework was, but according to our labs, you get a little bit less performance. I think the $300 saving that you get is worth the performance difference, but I think it depends on what your use case is. If you're gonna go for something that is more of a productivity workhorse, whether that's LLMs where you need the VRAM or I don't know, minor esports gaming, like a LAN event or something, I think this thing is pretty worth it, but I wouldn't buy it from that site. <laughs> I'm sorry, X Plus. While we were filming, we found an Alibaba listing for a device that looks surprisingly familiar to this one, and it starts at $1,250 for this config. And I think if you can buy it at that price, holy cow, this might be the cheapest way to get into the Strix Halo family, and even the 128 gig version is about $1,600 US dollars. In that case, I would go for it. But let me know what you guys think down below. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see what I was talking about when comparing this to the framework, go check out the framework desktop that I unboxed. It actually had a front face that you could configure with a bunch of tiles, and I put Linus on there. It was really cute.